Hi, I'm back again with Dr. Nicole Conkle, who's an organizational development expert. And I asked her to come on to continue our earlier series talking about social media do's and don'ts as it relates to being an employee. And so thanks for being on the show again, Nicole. Oh, no problem. My pleasure, Lee. Thanks for having me. So can we talked a little bit about some of the things that you shouldn't do. Can you tell people who are in an active job search mode, hoping sure. to maybe work at your firm or some other firm, what are the things that you would suggest that they do as it relates to making their LinkedIn profile look attractive to an employer? Sure. So I always will tell people when you're looking, actively searching for employment, make sure your LinkedIn page is open. Um, I would caution you if you're currently employed not to um, have a situation where you, you are shown as actively looking or actively interested in recruiters contacting you because obviously your current employer can see that. Um, but what I want to make sure of is that your page is professional. Professional means no spelling and grammar errors. Um, professional also means outlining what your accomplishments have been. Um, one of the things that people just do when they're looking for um, jobs is we want to talk about results and not just job duties, but results. And so to make a big focus on that on your LinkedIn page. Yeah, and certainly uh, not having typos. Please, uh, no typos. <laughs> no typos, no grammatically incorrect sentences. Um, speak about yourself in in the in the first person. Um, you are selling yourself on LinkedIn essentially, mm -hmm. and you want people to to read that and say, "Hmm, I want to contact this person." Mm -hmm. And speaking of contact, what would you recommend people do with regard to the contact information tab? Well, I really, really encourage people to have a professional email address. Um, so nothing with any sort of sexual innuendos. I would also say nothing that's related to your birth date. Uh, unfortunately, you know, um, age discrimination is, is something that is real. And so we don't want to have that be out there. Um, and so I, I would just say my email address is Nicole, uh, my former name, Washington, PhD at Gmail. That's what I wanted people to see. Um, and so that's what, what email I use when I'm in a, a job search. Now, what, what about the photo? What are your thoughts on what you've seen with LinkedIn photos? What's worked, what hasn't worked? What doesn't work is a picture of your dog. What doesn't work are selfies. Um, I think that in this day and age, we all have the opportunity to have a professional headshot. There is no other type of photo that should be on LinkedIn, in my opinion, other than a professional headshot. Uh, even if you have to do it with your own iPhone or an Android device, we are able to do that, but you should be in professional clothing. You should look like you are going on a job interview in that photo. And if you're on a budget, you can use services like Upwork and find sure. a photographer that if you're patient and flexible, you should be able to get a professional headset set done would, or, or even sure. go to, you know, one of the, the department store photo. Yeah, options. absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you can, you can easily do a professional headshot for $20, easily. And then the other thing too is you can actually hire people who are professionals in HR to help edit your LinkedIn and make and give you that critique. Yes, yes, I, I do believe there's value in that. I do think that you should work with people that are reputable. Not everybody that uh, dis says that they look at LinkedIn profiles and resumes should be. And so I think you should look at some examples of work that they've done in the past to see if that's something that um, will be beneficial to you moving forward. But at no time should you go into that thinking, if this person does my resume or does my LinkedIn page, I'm mm -hmm. automatically gonna get a job. It's still you know, putting your best foot forward out there mm -hmm. with all different types of, of aspects um, that are necessary for the job search. Yeah, I'd like to see certifications. For sure. Papers, I especially like to see that the person can write. Right. Uh, that's not appropriate for all positions, but it, it's helpful. For sure. I, even if, you know, there is maybe you're not the perfect grammatical person, you should be in your LinkedIn profile. Yeah, you, you, should you be can in get someone resume. who is to check yes, your page. exactly. And, and so there's, there's really not a reason why that should not be happening. Uh, what are your thoughts about, what's your opinion when you see an employee that has reviews and how, how would you advise people to approach the review section? On LinkedIn? On LinkedIn. 
You know, I honestly, as an employer, don't really pay attention much to um, the review section, but when I have, I've looked at the person that's actually writing the review. I've actually gone in and clicked on their uh, profile to see what role they actually have, mm -hmm. um, how that person has interacted in the past. If it's a former employer, that's always good mm -hmm. um, if for you to have a former you know, boss or or supervisor or colleague, but it should definitely be a professional review. If you want to go have your friends do reviews, make sure they're professional yeah. and they're talking about work. Yeah, it, I agree with that. It, when I look at the reviews, if the reviews are written from people who clearly were, a, a peer review helps as well. Sure. If it's a supervisory review, that, that means more, yeah. but I also look at the quality and caliber of the writing of the reviewer. So you don't want to have right. someone writing a review on your page that has grammatical errors <laughs> exactly. because that doesn't really speak well. Right. And then I also look to see if it's a, a review swap because that's actually mm -hmm. an effective way to get a review is to write one. Right. So, of course. So I'll look at the the profiles to see that as well. Right. I think I think that that's that's true. I think the most valuable review is from a former supervisor, a current supervisor that's talking about your current work. Um, when people are reviewing, they should be talking about the results that you've done. Yeah. It's a you know John is a great person is is great, but it doesn't tell a potential yeah. employer yeah. anything about how you're going to be for them when they when if they hire you yeah something like john john came in took over a fall train uh project realigned the team yes achieved a 20 percent growth in yes. sales and 10 percent improvement in profitability that, that's kind of action oriented where, action where, where oriented where is really what is going to get you noticed um when when we're talking about reviews when we're talking about your resume when we're talking about linkedin well, are there any other thoughts you have before we wrap up? You know, I just want people to know that uh, LinkedIn is, is a great tool, um, but the best tool for um, actually um, getting whatever opportunity that you want and, and keeping it or being successful is being the best you, whether you're in private or in social media. And so always keep that in mind. We are mm -hmm. always under a radar. We're <laughs> Somebody's always, always looking at us. Always on camera. And so how do you want that to be viewed um, in the future and always be thinking about that? Great. Well, thanks so much for being on the show. Thank you for having me, Lee. Great.